I went ahead and said, I do. For to break new ground is to break boundaries. We too have walked that path of dreams. And even after these years, I still maintain that woman, your mother, is a better babe. <laughs> My mother was a chiquito. Let me tell you if you don't know. Good morning, Bella here. So I'm at work and I need to quickly get my makeup done and um, because I haven't updated you guys on what's happened to me in the past couple of days, I thought now would be a very good time to do so while I do my makeup, right? So um, we're killing two birds with one stone. Do you ever feel like, why do they say that? Like, why do you have to kill two birds? I might just be into this. I really am not like pro-animal. I'm not anti-animal either, you know, but it's just like, mm, a veggie. Mm -hmm. Why not just say, why not kill kill two two what now i don't know man so anyway how's everybody doing it's going to be a great day by god's grace i'm positive about that and okay so i'm lacking eye pencil my pencil is so short stunted it's literally in existence non-existent <coughs> so anyway um i've had a really fantastic past few days you know um i had when i when i got back from what's it called from the east because you all know that i was on tour right and i will not stop talking about it don't worry <laughs> when i got back from the east um wh while i was still there actually there were a few places that we visited right that you know really talk about like the history of the people and everything i thought it was very beautiful because i think many a time especially for those of us who are like based in lagos we tend to pay little to no attention to other guys that exist elsewhere because it's like oh you know we are like the commercial hub so like literally everything happens in lagos but there's a lot of things happening in other parts of the country that we don't even know and that also makes us look like we're snobbish so you guys my opinion is very embarrassing yeah mm. i'm not going to focus on that i'll just get straight to the makeup so anyway so if you think i want to talk about i want to talk about a few people that i discovered towards the end of the year um how amazing amazing days 13 to i think 16 were for me um and of course a few things that uh, i just want to talk about just like on the surface this might be slightly long but i'm sure you're gonna enjoy it anyway so first off right so while i was in the east we performed our stage play over in the enugu sports club and it was a really cool place it apparently is like one of the most popular places um in enugu states and yeah while we're on the topic of enugu states i think i enjoyed my time most there of all the south Eastern cities that we visited i think enugu was the state i loved the most i, I just i was just a vibe you know about the place and it's like hmm, okay yeah i mean beyond the fact that the place is very clean <laughs> it's very clean the road networks are amazing um there's just something about the place you know it's just like very funny morals <laughs> so there was that and then um but yeah if it, like i was thinking about it before you know a while ago i'm like okay if just for some weird reason it came down to okay which south eastern city would you like to maybe stay or residing or whatever enugu was top of mind y'all top of mind so anyway when i got back to lagos i was going through a few of the places that we had visited and i saw that dk chuku merije yep if you know me well and you have been listening to my radio show for the past couple of days i'm sure you're going to roll your eyes like auntie it's okay <laughs> but i've been talking about this guy for a while like so when i go back to lagos um, Center for Memories, which was a place that we visited in Lagos, um, the uh, documents the history of the Igbo people. So I think they had also kind of like hosted him somehow. Um, so I was, I saw a few pictures and videos of his visit there. So he's a poet, he's a writer, and he does he does stage plays and stage poems. I don't know if that makes any sense. So anyway. Um, so I saw the pictures, I was like, oh, this house. So I was going through his rights, and I was like, ah, this guy is such a brilliant 
um, poet and a brilliant writer. Only for me to now realize that I had seen a post that he did in 2016. Some of you might have seen that post as well, where he wrote a letter on his Facebook page to his wife on the occasion of their eighth year anniversary. Um, and it was very funny. Eight things I hate about being married to you. And then when that post went viral, he had to do another one uh, that was titled Eight Things I Love About Being Married to You on the occasion of their eighth year anniversary. So I was like, oh, this is the guy. Oh, I didn't even know. You know, so whatever, Sha. And then and I now realized that. So I was like, okay. I don't know what exactly I was looking for. Next thing was that I found myself searching for him on YouTube. Right, and then I saw that he had a TED talk, so I watched it, loved it so much. Spent the next couple of days sharing that TED talk on my show because uh, it was just brilliant, you know, talking about the power of identity not being restricted to where one is from, you know. And I thought it was a very brilliant TED talk, so I shared that on my show. And from there, I found out that I just kind of loved how he put words together. So I went and searched for him on YouTube, found out that he has his own YouTube channel subscribed to the channel binge watched literally all the content on his channel wasn't satisfied like i'm like that i can, I can be so i can be so invested sometimes in people and in things yeah so i i, I searched for his blog he, he used to have a blog i think i think the last time i posted something on his blog was like maybe july or maybe november i think so anyway searched him out found out his blog read a few of the well not a few more than a few of the articles read a number of articles on his blog went on his facebook page checked out a few more so i think i have a very interesting personality which is why you know i can be like that sometimes where like i love words and how people put them together you know which is really like my thing so like poetry uh and funny i'm not big on rap music i love jackie hill perry i listen to lecrae every once in a blue moon <laughs> you know but yeah like still i love words and how they are you know how they are formed how they are constructed in sentences rhymes and whatnot so like it was just up my alley when i checked him out on youtube and on his facebook page and i was binge reading binge watching literally everything so random trip to his facebook page one day I saw that the show that he would have in Abuja, because it's not based in Lagos, the show that he has in Abuja was coming to Lagos and it was on the 14th. So I'm like, wait a minute, I must attend this thing. So immediately I checked out the website, um, uh, ordered for the tickets. I was uh, hoping to go with someone. Um, so I, I ordered for two tickets. In fact, you know what's very interesting? At the time, I wasn't even, I just bought the tickets. I was like, oh, anybody who, because I mean, sometimes you really don't have friends who are like interested in the exact same things as you are. So, me for instance, that's why I said my personality is very interesting. Some things that, that I totally love. So my friends are just like, oh, please, please, please. It's, your own is too much. So, I checked it out and then I said, well, I was attending this guy's event. Look, as in, I was anticipating the day. Hey, you think it was something else? So I was telling everybody who gets to listen, like, yo, man, Dike Chikomiridi is having his poem made in Lagos and blah, 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 and stuff and stuff. I'm going there. It's at Muson. I was so excited, you guys. The day came. My dates build on me. My dad said they were not coming again, you know, so if I my start, I was like, what I should have just done was to uh, give out the ticket on on my Instagram. I was like, it didn't even occur to me. I was like, well, I beg Jerry, but I think it was like a blessing in disguise because when I now got there, ah, Belarus, I, if some of you know me, you know that I don't, I'm not a professional at sitting still. <laughs> like I do a lot of things very well. Sitting still is unfortunately not one of those things. Like I'm, I'm a very active person. So that day at the event, before he did the last few poems, they were like, oh, so they were like, oh, we need somebody to join us in the Made in Nigeria experience. We like, we like for two people to please walk forward. Eh? Before the guy even landed on the statement, I was ready. That wasn't the Chikumari, mind you. He'd been on the statement. I was just like, oh my god, look at the man, Dike Chikumari J is like so talented. You know, so I walked on that stage and then the anchor said um okay would you sing for us second stanza of national anthem me i was just saying that they would say come and ask with us 
because like i said you know it is poetry and play so i was like ah okay and now sang national anthem or the circumstance of which that part circumstance is what we sing at church you know as our prayer for nigeria after service you know so i mean i was like okay this is the first task what is the second hurdle that we have to climb i told the guy who came out with me that he should say he should recite the pledge the guy recited it we still stood there because like thank you very much i'm like <laughs> i didn't do that but <laughs> it was exciting to have you know just you know done that um and then after the show, yeah, I was able to meet Dikechi Kumerije. I took a selfie with him, you guys. Like, that was one of the most exciting things that have happened to me this weekend. I was, I was happy. I was happy. It was just amazing, you know. I don't get easily starstruck, to be honest. But, like, the people who really make me starstruck make me really starstruck. And they are very, very few. And, you know, that dude is one of them. You know, and it was just amazing to see. I, I met some old friends there as well. M made some new ones. Really awesome people. Oh my goodness. Really, really awesome guys, to be honest. So from there, hmm, the journey of my weekend now started. I had a vigil at church. It was a vigil for singles. Entered some very interesting traffic. It wasn't too heavy anyway. Entered some interesting traffic from the show to church for vigil. Got to church, called the driver to please come and pick me from church because I work on Saturday mornings. Um, so Saturday morning, video finished at three. You know, work started at six. Driver came to me at half past five, took me to the office, finished my show at nine, and then rushed back home to go and freshen up. And then I got on my way again because I had hosting duties for the fastest shedder on that Saturday. I'm going to leave a link in the description box right below so you can see what the show is about. A really brilliant idea, in my I had. Not going to give away too much. You have to go to the channel to watch it. Uh, it was a very busy weekend, as you can tell. And then I had to go to then in church on Sunday morning. I woke up late. I couldn't make it for workers' meeting. Thankfully, I made it just in time for um sunday school you know but like it was really exciting to be honest um the, ah, it was a, see eh, i've had a lot of um uh I, th like this year there was like a list of things i wanted to do this year and like they were my plans but like the way the year is ending no i don't have a hand in it it's a lie it's all god i can't even it is all God, to be honest. And I'm so grateful for everything, for the opportunity. Really, I'm grateful. So that's exactly how my weekend went on. Very good like that. Sunday, uh, I made the, I, I decided I was going to, after church, just go home and go and sleep. But I had a meeting. Um, so that kind of made me stay at church longer than I had expected. But I didn't, I didn't stay so long anyway, regardless. Ah, and I got home. If you follow me on Instagram, you see my dilemma on Sunday. I fried plantain for my brothers. And I, want, I fried plantain and egg. And I wanted to eat, but I already told me I wasn't going to eat. I'm like, I'm full. I'm not eating. When I finish making the egg. Oh, my gosh. It was so sweet. So much sweet. It was so nice. And I already saved everything for them. I didn't know how to tell them. Ah, you push your me egg for me. Eventually, I just tasted egg. And I was like, mm. I beg, Jerry. There's a lot more where that came from. I can still make another one. <laughs> but anyway yeah um monday of course back to work um and yeah actually it's just been very chill from there so yes that's how the past couple of days have been pretty exciting i know i know jesus is here Okay, well, that's all for now. Let me quickly finish this makeup and then I'll be back at y'all. So, while I was just going through my Monday, until, until that, ah, uh, it was not a very exciting day and whatever, not much was happening. I get on Instagram and I see that person, Nathaniel Bassi, a man I love so much. I think he's really um, anointed and, you know, very gifted as well. He gets on his Instagram and says, oh, Christians only do gospel music until it's their wedding day. And it was interesting that he said that because 
um, I know I have said on my channel before that I'm going to do a list of danceable songs that are, you know, um, that are that are upbeat, right? I have sadly not gotten uh, around to doing it, but I will. Like I took that as an attack, you know, like, yo, she said they're going to do a list. Where is it now? Like I felt so bad because I mean I've been nice to just say, sir, are you minding them? See list that I did here of Christian gospel because I know some really upbeat gospel songs. You know what I mean? So when he said that, we were like, oh, well, there's nothing wrong with dancing to secular song on your wedding day. Yo, I think differently. I think that you should as much as possible do away with secular songs on your wedding day. There was only a time I used to do a wedding show. I still do it anyway. And I talked about songs that you should never play on your wedding day. You know, and these are secular songs. I just kind of restricted my list to those songs because the message there you know the, the message on those songs is just very weird even your boo get a boo how you play that kind of song on your wedding day like i don't understand it's not just bands it's not just you know yeah let's just dance no i really don't think so so when you put that message i was like mm -hmm, yeah i'm with this i'm with this man on this so but the comments were very weird and then very interesting because i have like friends in the music industry as well i was a bit disappointed to be honest because some of them came out and said oh well when gospel artists do love songs people will start castigating them or people will start saying that they've backslid and i'm like i'm sorry yo. i'm sorry i have never said that about any gospel artist i think the only time i i um maybe tried to say that was a time when bibuinans did one song like that and i was like you know that was really my first um encounter quote unquote with a gospel artist doing a song like that and i asked my mom i was young at the time no special reason just thought you should know bb winers so i was like ah, mom is it right for a gospel artist to sing a love song and my mom was like of course now there's nothing wrong with that when he's not you know singing um when he's not attributing you know god's characteristics to a woman or whatever of course he can sing a love song for her. as christians we are called to love and there's nothing wrong with that and as long as he's not talking about you know her you know her body in any in any manner that is not edifying you know i was like okay and that was it like since that time i don't have any issues the gospel artist sing a love song zero issues the only issue i can have is maybe if you use some kind of words that maybe um so some kinds of uh, terms that you use in referring to the woman that maybe your secular counterparts for lack of a better word use uh, i'm like mm, okay that's a bit weird because i mean they are kind of like known for these words i don't want to confuse people you know but there's nothing wrong in singing the song of love for your significant other so when i saw even gospel as saying that i'm like ah for real me i don't put certain way that does gospel musical me i already have an understanding you know when i did not have an understanding that was different i was a child then but like you know now i've gotten the enlightenment and i can make a more informed opinion you know express a more informed opinion about that so i think there's nothing wrong with the gospel artist doing a gospel doing, doing there's nothing wrong with the gospel artist doing a love song for their symptoms or that or as a song that because even though people who are not married you know like I'm, I'm, I want to call some people out on this, but I, I choose not to because I know some of these guys have done love songs before that I have played on my show. I have told them I love that I listen to and I dance to. So it's like, where is all this coming from? Where is all this? If a gospel artist should do a love song, people are going to say this or that. It's like, back in the day, yes, people were, people were averse to that. But like, now you can you can do it because we're beginning to you know express the love of god but i think we are, we are every single day understanding what it means to love like jesus christ said we should we, we did not always get it let's be honest so like now you know that okay oh, you can love someone who doesn't necessarily even believe what you believe but that is your duty as a christian do you understand like i don't want to go out of point but like so when i said i was like mm -mm, this ain't right so Pastor Nathanabasi got a lot of comments. People were saying, I read someone, I was like, ah, people are disrespectful, shall. Like, so he now said he's going to have a live Instagram thing today at 3 p.m. I'm going to, by the grace of God, watch it. I have a meeting at the office, but I will try to watch it. I'm really like, I have my fingers crossed. Because honestly, it's something that has been ringing in my head for a very long time. Like, someone needs to talk about this. You know what I mean? Um, and even, I think we need more gospel DJs. Just saying. We need more gospel DJs um, who who do their work well. I have been at a few programs where the gospel DJs were fantastic and some others like, ah, now wow, they'll be repeating songs over and over and over again. So it's weird, you know? So I think that um, it's a collective effort, to be honest. I have to really get back to my makeup now so I can show you guys um, the finished work and then, yeah, I'm at work, so 
that's what I should be doing, working, not vlogging, but whatever. <laughs> PhD, Media Fuse, Deals Warehouse, Media Planet, Algorithm Media, Universal Macau, All Out Media, All Season Zenith, Luke hey. and Jay, was an accomplished year. Thank, Thank you for you watching, subscribe, yes. like you, the video, the client and the listener. Um, Thank you for your kind and... Leave a comment down below. Media Seal, Media Reach, OMD, Media Perspective.